Yo, what's up, Poly Maniacs, MBG, and Kenny Boucher coming at you today. Yo, dog. So, uh, how about them Harlequins? We're gonna we're gonna take a look at the new book, probably uh, focusing on some war gear, and uh, just kind of go over things because I think I, I think what do you do when you read a new book? Um, I typically read the war gear first. <laughs> I find that it helps me out immensely. War gear, warlord traits, any sort of special rules for the army, like reanimation protocols. I like to look at stats, you know, like, not a big Xenos player, so stats are usually out the window for me. I just gotta really look at the. <laughs> hey, hear me the time in book? No. Bunch of tough, yeah, bunch of toughness three tryhards. Toughness three, strength three, super tryhards. <laughs> I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to, I ain't about that life. So if you haven't already done so, make sure you hop on over to The Long War and check out that new YouTube channel we're going to drop on you guys here soon. Uh, we've got a ton of subscriptions on there, but we definitely just need a few more from you guys. So uh, make sure that you check that out because, uh, man, we got some fresh stuff coming out. We've uh, recorded a bunch of videos. We're, we're editing them. That's why I'm down here at the Beats Laboratory. Just getting a bunch of work done in preparation for all this because I don't know about you guys, but it is going to get hectic here soon with towards narrative seasonal. Ha hashtag Wild Stallions. <laughs> hashtag Wild air, Stallions. Air guitar solo. Um, <laughs> oh, we need to start working that in. We need to start working that in. We need to practice. <laughs> we should practice our air guitars. Yeah, no doubt. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, please, the long war is very important to us. Um, that's when the battle reports are going to be. Um, and very soon, I mean, very soon we're going to have some. We keep saying that. I said we, we said we said February. It's still February. It's still February. Yeah, we dropped two trailers. I mean, I, I think they were great. I'm maybe I'm just losing press, but but no, I, I'm super stoked. We hope you guys are excited too. So please go over there, drop a subscribe. We, we're putting a link somewhere in this video, wherever there's space. We don't know. Right here. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's hop on over to the Harlequin book and take a first look. Okay, so we touched on this briefly in the first look review the other day about basically how they have the special detachment called the mask detachment and that you can also take the formations as part as part of the Battle Forge Army. So what do you what do you think about those the, the new formations they're coming out with in every one of these books? It seems like there's more and more. Yo, they're not messing around right now. They're bringing the heat. Uh, super spicy rules. Obviously, they're not messing around too with their business model. Obviously, they gotta buy a lot of cool models to play these attachments, but they are giving us rules to back up that purchasing decision for the most part. So what do you think about this here? From the start of the second turn, all units in this detachment have the fleet and can run and charge in the same that, same turn. That's a really important deal. That's like OG fleet. I yep. mean, and that is, if you're trying to do any assault team and you have a bunch of guys who might have to be walking more than they, they want to, like you put people on a paper airplane, people are gonna shoot it down. You know what I mean? Like. This yeah. is a big deal. I mean, like, you might not even need a transport with stuff like this. I mean, you're talking, you can have a bunch of shroud or, or, or visibilities, and you can literally build a unit that can just get close a distance super fast. Yeah, and, and it's just like you touched on, you know, especially also when the first psychic power is something that you can't target that makes it very hard to target units, you know? So that's uh, that's kind of that's kind of cool. Let's try to get to the war gear section here. Okay, so that was basically the start of the book there. But like I said in the intro, kind of what I like to do is check out all the war gear and things like that. So let's uh, let's head back to that section here, and then we kind of get well. It looks like it's starting out with the weapons. Oh uh, well, actually, let's talk about the warlord traits first. So there's three different warlord trait tables uh, that you can take, and the first three are all the same for each one, uh, which is. I don't know why they put them in here with their pictures, <laughs> so you have to kind of... Yeah, I mean, like, we apologize for this, obviously. There's been a, a situation we're getting our codexes on time lately. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure the i, the I version's a little bit more, um, I guess, uh, smooth <laughs> from the EPUB, but I, I still like the EPUB just the same. So these three are the same no matter what you take, and if you take a troop, uh, um, excuse me, uh, one of the... The mask? The, no, not the mask, the, uh, uh, the troop leader guy. You you get to the full D six. So the first three are the same, which they're they're pretty solid. I mean, Warlord has four up and vulnerable. Normally it's a five because the Hollow Suit uh, rerolls all to hit of ones in shooting and combat. That's really good. And all saving throws of one. For an enemy. And same with throws of one. Huh? Yeah. Oh, which, that's a, that's strong. It is it is basically strong. Uh, I also like uh, it isn't well actually this was one I was already talking about the Dance of the Infinite Mirrors, where you basically get to just hop twenty four inches. 
Yeah, it's like a, it's like a shunt move from the Grey Knights, man. That's a really powerful late game tool. And if you combo that with Nemesaur from the uh, Necrons, who just gets to pick his Warlord trait once per turn, you were like, hey, I'm just dipping out with my Necrons. Ooh, that's uh, that's pretty dirty. There's also another one here that I really like. From... Wait, does he get to steal other people's Warlord traits? He sure does. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That could be a problem. <laughs> yeah. And now and now there's a codex with three charts of Warlord traits. Oh my Boom. goodness. We right? Have, <laughs> things need to happen. Uh, the Webway Walker is actually pretty good. That's uh, It's very robust uh, as far as, you know, D3, uh, select up to D3 units. Each unit has one of those following special rules. Deep Strike, Infiltrate, Scout, or each unit may, so, may select a different special rule. So you could do one of each or all three or whatever. That's pretty cool, man. That's really strong. I mean, obviously, Scout is one of my favorite things of all time. I mean, especially if you combo Scout off with that whole fleeting deal. I mean, man, you can build a really interesting army Oh, I mean, it's a massive foot army with some good psychic powers, and you can get, I mean, you can really just get people's faces. I mean, that's like, I used to see armies back in the old days, like the 13th Company, they were just all on foot, and they would, they would still, still yep. charge you. It would still get to you, man. Because, How did you get here? <laughs> because, I mean, especially Fleet lets you re-roll the run and the charge. So you're talking about, like, starting on turn two, you can start running, re-rolling that, and then charging, re-rolling that, mm -hmm. at the same time. That's a six-inch move, a D6 run, with a reroll putting you in the like you've already moved nine plus inches and then you get an a charge distance of seven on average rerolling dice pushing you up to like the you know the, the 10 inches or the nine the nine inches on average there yep you know now you've got an 18 inch charge with a, with a, with a unit of not jump troops and even if you don't go first you're still right next to the enemy like they have to deal with you they are immediately on a clock yeah, it's pretty <laughs> you must, interesting. You must deal with me. Same thing with the infiltrate. Like you can basically infiltrate with so many of these uh, competitive events going towards uh, Maelstorm. You can basically infiltrate and take over most of the board before they even get their first turn. Which is why you can see why they put that caveat in there. Uh, Started turn two. Yes. <laughs> yes, because you don't want to just be like, oh, uh, so I'm going to score these five. <laughs> that that would get pretty bad. So next up, let's just actually take a look at the war gear itself. Now, some of the stuff you know, we've seen before, like Fusion Pistol, that's Dirty Xenos Tech. Haywire Cannons, existing. you know, th those are the rage on the interwebs right now. Uh, hallucinogen and Grenade Launcher come standard on the Shadow Seer. It's strength one, and it has a hallucinogen effect. It randomizes in the unit. It it's cool to have for free. I probably wouldn't spend, spend any points on it personally. Uh, what do you think of this Neuro Disruptor? This is a new one. Strength uh, strength 1, AP2, Pistol, Fleshbane. Yeah. So always 1's on a 2, always can take your female pain against it. It's 12 inches. How many points is it? Uh, I believe it's 5, and every member of a troop can have one. Oh, well, my word. That is a good weapon. <laughs> I thought it was pretty pretty snazzy myself. That's pretty good. Uh, the prismatic cannon is what's going to be on that Void Reaver, that that crazy the crazy new uh, wannabe Venom. Star Bolas is what's on the uh, the new jet bikes. Now, what would you prefer if you have a bunch of jet bikes and you have a weapon that's 12 inch range that is strength six AP two uh, blast one use only, or you have a close combat weapon called the Zephyr Glaive that basically on the charge is strength five AP two. What what do you prefer? Which one would well, you I, rather? Well, I have? know that you can do the. Um because they can take, they can take other weapons. They can take haywire gun, other weapons too, right? Uh, they uh, the uh, I think one per. They all come with shirking cannon stock, and I think one per can do that. But we can check that. I mean, out my, my heart tells me to go with the assault. I, I figured you'd say that because I mean, if you want to be twelve inches away and shooting stuff, and then you're in jump, assault range, dog. You're in assault range, even though you do have the assault move with jet bikes. You can you know two d six away. It's still hard to say. It's still dicey. I mean, I mean, that's still, I mean, that's 20, I mean, that's an average of 19 inches. Like, if you're 12 inches away and then you roll two dice, that's a seven. Nice you are inches. easily in many things assault range. Yes. That is not, that is not a safe bet, man. No, it, it doesn't seem like it is. It seems like you have to combo these Yeah, you're about to get charged by Demon Prince right yep. there, you know. Um, and then we get into shirking weapons. We all kind of know what those are, but then they brought back the Shrieker, which is the the, uh, the gun that the Deathchester has. And we were talking about that on the webcast, uh, the Forge Narrative webcast, basically how that works. Ooh, we're going in there. Going into standby there. Boom. Uh, so that is a one-shot weapon that's strength six, uh, flesh pain, and it's got that bio uh, bio explosive attack right there. That if you do kill a model, and it explodes with a small blast radius. Yeah, that could be interesting. Yeah, especially if you clip two different two different units, and then they both have that negative modifier to their leadership. And there's all sorts of leadership shenanigans that that you can do 
with this Harlequin list, I feel like you just have to be cognizant of uh, whether you know the, the thing you're trying to modify is leadership or, or whether they're fearless, I guess, you know? That's true. We want some of these leadership shenanigans just to be so much better than they are. They're so on paper powerful. The problem is that so many people just, it doesn't matter. There's so many other right. armies out there, you know? Like, I mean, Marines still have to, they, they don't auto pass. They still fall back if they fail. Yeah, but, but then you got demons, you got tyrannies, yeah, you got but even the, But the internet is so, like, tells us these things. Like, like a, like a space player player's not going to get cut cost of the fall off a board edge. I mean... Unless you alpha strike them, maybe you're... You know, but I mean, still, if you're 12 inches off a board edge, it's impossible. That's you true. You know what I mean? So I'm saying is like, so we, we think that a lot of those those, those shenanigans, and here's, a, here's the tips and here's the tactics inside of it. Right. We think a lot of these uh, negative... Uh, Leadership modifiers are best utilized with this, the, the um, telepathy power dominate. Yeah, dominate definitely a straight up leadership check. You're not immune to any Which of that. Which is a characteristic check, not a morale yep. check. So fearless people have to take it. If you can pop up negative four or, or more leadership on people, and you can dominate them, like this, this is like an anti Death Star thing. Like you can take someone's thousand point unit and say your leadership is six right now, or made or four. Or four and you have to pass that check if you want to move. Then again, if you want to shoot, and then again, if you want to assault. Like, that's a game changer. Yeah, that's that's brutal. Basically, you are sitting there for a hot minute. Yes. And then you can take things it's like It's like hallucination. This. Remember how powerful hallucination was against Death Stars? Yep. Before they changed it, yep. when you roll that right result. I mean, this is literally a potential, you might be able to throw this in the middle of your army and be able to deal with some Death Stars. And then you can even combo in like the Hemlock Fighter, that if you're within 12 inches of it, you have to pass these successful checks. Yep. That's just brutal. That's just insult to injury too. So, you know, that's kind of interesting stuff. I like, which one is it though? Embrace the one that is, well, the, the Caress of Death is the old school rending. Remember that where you, yep. you hit on a six and it was AP2 right that's off the so bat? That's so awesome. The Embrace is the one where it's D3 Hammer Wrath, Resolve and Strength 6. This is our one of our new favorite things right here, man. Yes. Getting, again, the unit of guys with D3 Strength 6 Hammer Wrath attacks, that's pretty neat. Yeah, and they all they all can have it for only five points, I believe it yep. is. We do like Holocrans, uh, the Holocrans Caress, though, man. Like OG Renning for the new people out there, that is when you rolled six of the hit, that was automatic AP2. That, that was, that was a Those were the days, back in the, back in the min max. You got to charge my five G Steelers, you just take your guys at the table. And you're like, there. oh, no. <laughs> yeah, man. There's some, I mean, there's some powerful hand to hand elements. Here, but like it's what we said, um, it's really hard to get across the table with these guys. I mean, you, you need to really think about what you want to do with these units because it's not they're not making it easy to put these guys in close combat. Yeah, you have to take the ta you have to have task and purpose for these lists. You have to make sure you're choosing your right transports. You have to make sure that you know you're looking at how to get them in, psychic powers, things like that. That's that Zephyr Glaive boss talking about the strength, strength five on the charge because they have furious charge. Man, yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's what we were oh, talking it's AP3, about. AP three, but that's okay. I mean, AP two slash three. Oh, that's right. On the, on the yeah, charge. Charges on the charges too. too. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's what we were talking about. You know, like, there is some interesting stuff in this book. Then we get into, you know, the normal flip belt stuff. We kind of all know what that does. They added in the lookout sir rule on a two up because that basically falls in line with seventh. Um, then we get into the Mirage launchers, which is a new addition, the four up invulnerable save. Instead of jinking, now remember. Yeah, you can do this, what, once per game? You can do it once per game. It is an invulnerable save. You are not jinking. The so what's good about it is like when someone's going first on you, you yeah. don't have to jink all your stuff and not shoot on your first turn. Right. This is pretty good stuff. And there's a lot of things like there's even formations that let you reroll ones or reroll all invulnerables and stuff like that. Or yeah. Something. Re reroll ones to invulnerables. There's yeah. stuff that gives you plus one invulnerable. You just have to kind of pick and choose as far as formations go. And that's probably what the next video is going to be. We're just going to break down all the units, go over the formations, kind of how the min to min max the points uh, to take them successfully because. I think the four, we're going to see a lot of these formations, whether or not it's in the mass detachment or not. Uh, the hollow suits are very familiar as well, you know, five up and vol. Now the hollow field is a little bit of controversy, you know, we kind of saw that a couple weeks ago, where it's a five up and vol save, same fluff as the hollow field that's on the wave serpent currently. Very, yeah. But it works completely different. It's not, you mean it's not OP? It's not OP. I mean, it's decent. It's a five up invul. It's nothing to sneeze at. Still good. Still good. Still good. Mm. Uh, but, you know, who knows what's going on there? Uh, then we get to the actual big pieces of war gear in the, in the list itself. Now, some of these you can only be taken by certain models. You cannot what? take the crescendo on the, har on the solitaire because. Which, which one is your favorite one here? Um, I would probably say, because you can combo it, the Mask of Secrets. Well, a model with the Mask of Secrets has the Fearless Special Rule. In addition, enemy models within 12 inches of the bear suffer minus two to their leadership. This is one of those combos we were talking about. Yes. This is the thing, guys. This right here. You get, I mean, you can just, I mean, even with just this, 
a terrify and a dominate, you're making people take minus three. I'm just saying, I'm not saying you need to go all in, but I'm saying if you have this, a terrify and a dominate, and maybe five world charges in your army, you can have a classic MSUE basic Dark Eldar, maybe Eldar combo with some Harlequins. But now you have a tool to handle Death Stars. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, so that's that's definitely some stuff to keep in mind. Now, we, then we get into the actual psychic powers themselves, which we got the Veil of Tears, which is the War Charge One jammy. It hasn't changed much; just this War Charge One can be targeted within two d six times too. So, you know, you're looking at what <laughs> you're fourteen. If you're fourteen inches, if your Shadow Seer and his squad is fourteen inches away, well, you're probably not going to be able to target him. Now, keep in mind that piece of war gear we just talked about only has a 12-inch range, and it can only be taken by Shadow Seers. Yeah, you know, it's obviously like a situational piece of war gear, like I was saying. Like, mm -hmm. you put him where he needs to be in that situation. Because I feel like, you know, when you go, I mean, like, a lot of these MSU armies can't deal with a true Death Star fast, like, board control Death Star. So, if you have this ability to go up there and dominate something like that, then you can win. If you go up there and you fail and he crushes you, man, he's going to crush you anyway. So how would uh, how would the super friends deal with getting uh, getting dominated at like that would be six? that is a that is a massive fear, man. Like if I move my super friend, my classic super friends up, and you hit me with a dominate, and I, I mean I am gonna be b hole puckered city <laughs> up ahead, man. Like I am not gonna be happy. <laughs> no, no, it's gonna I'm be about thirteen hundred points in that unit, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that you do not want that sitting there looking stupid. No, man. If I see somebody with that kind of combo, that might change that might change my list a little bit, man. If that combo becomes popular, I, I am absolutely I think worried it about it. I think, I think we're going to see a lot of crazy variations on this combo. Now, what was the one thing you were saying you were asking about for the Solitaire? You're like, hey, does that guy get... You're like, three up, three up involved, but he's only toughness three. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest problem is like a lot of these guys have cool powers, but they're only T3. Well, what about if he's stealth and shrouded? I mean, that's... I mean, I'm so happy that, that's, that they're doing these things because it's you need it. You can't have a whole bunch of scrawny little Xenos <laughs> running around the table with their toughness three. And, and pretend that they're going to do anything if you don't give them some cool rules. Nope, I agree. Um, then there's actually most of these powers is a reverse invi invisibility malediction. That's war charge two. Uh, definitely pretty cool. Now remember, this this chart can only be taken by shadow seers, and they're sixty points, and they're warp charge one. You can pay twenty five and get the extra warp charge. So you almost need to take a bunch of them to try to get a good smattering of powers. You do, you do. And allies are going to be a big deal. This is definitely a very supplemental mm -hmm. style of play. Now, the one thing that I, I think we, we touched on earlier, too, was these two Warp Charge 2 powers right here are Witch Fires. Mm. The Lafasar. GW is, will learn one day that Witch, that witch Fires are stupid and uh, They are not good. Especially with focus. I mean, like, if you're going to hit me with, I got to roll all these dice to get a psychic power to go off, and then my opponent has to not roll his dice to stop me. Then I have to roll dice to hit you yeah. and then wound you. Man, you better. I mean, I'm okay with that if these things are like automatically pens or automatically wounds with the this death special rule, man. Give me some exciting witch fires, because right now it's only like Psychic Shriek and Vortex of Doom. That's like it. Yep, they, they are not fun. So, you know, the Shadow Seer is only Ballistic Seal 4. So yeah. you go through all this trouble to get a Warp Charge 2 power off. I'm, I'm just not happy with you might miss. I'm not happy with Warp Charge 2 witch fires that it's... don't have thing that cool rule. I mean, like this is the only part of the codex I'm not happy with. Is these witch fires, these level two witch fires on guys like hit on three still like, um, I just, ugh. it's very disappointing to me, especially as a guy who loves psychic powers to see this. Like. Yeah, it it was rough, but keep that in mind too that if you get a negative, uh, super negative bomb on somebody and you get this mirror of minds off on them, you're gonna burn them down no matter how many wounds they no, have. No, I see, I love it. It's just very situational. Yeah, yeah you're still, you're it's still, not worth the gamble. I need to buy this. I need to buy that. Then I need to buy this. Then I need to roll this. Like yeah, I'm and not, then I need to roll the hit. I mean, and then I might be able to kill your, your race. This is the definition hand. of a beer hammer uh, combo. Yeah. Which is fine. Uh, you know, tips and tactics is not about uh, beer hammer. It's about winning some games. And this is not something I would put any faith in the game. Yeah, I would much rather put all of my dice into uh, a bunch of little warp charge one jammies that comboed off together well than all of my dice and miss a warp charge two, I feel like. So that's just kind of where I'm at. Then we got the tactical objectives. Those are kind of whatever. And that's pretty much it for the actual stuff we wanted to go over. Now that we got this good baseline, I think in the next video, we can definitely hit up uh, more on the units and the formations now that we have this good foundation for the Codex build. Yo, Hobby Maniacs, thanks for checking out this edition of Tips and Tactics. Thanks for watching this on Next Level Painting and Spiky Mix. And together we are Wild Stallion. No, but seriously, we're the Long War. 
The subscriptions matter to us deeply. We are fueled by subscriptions. Please, when you get a second, go over to the Walmart, follow the link, subscription us, like us, whatever the social media's term is, we appreciate it. In the meantime, thanks for watching, players. Yo, dog. Thanks for checking out my channel. And don't forget, I've got plenty of other tutorials, tips and tactics, and many more. Also, if you get a chance, check out my best friend Robbie B's channel, Spiky Bits. He's got tons of sick videos dropping. Thanks for watching.